Hello, Penguin Art, Simon the Bitty Penguin, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. I know that this episode is a little late. I've sort of been keeping an upload schedule of every other day, but that was more accidental than anything. I've never had an upload schedule, and I need to emphasize that this is not a job. Okay, I've never had an upload schedule, and I never really planned to get one. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I've never opened a Patreon. Okay, I'm not dependent on this. This is a hobby. This is something I do just for pure enjoyment. Okay, so when I don't, when I'm busy or when I, you know, wouldn't enjoy making a video, I just don't make one. Simple as. Um, I'm sorry if. Some of you don't agree with that, but that's just how my channel is. It's all casual. I just make things when I can and when uh, I enjoy it. And I don't, I don't put anything else in my life uh, at risk or um, sacrifice anything in order to get videos out a little bit earlier. Uh, so just to clear that up a little bit. So yes, this video is a little bit late, but uh, hopefully I can make up for it over the Christmas period. I finally finished. Oh, finished the term. It's, oh, it's been a long long term and I'm very very tired and looking forward to just stuffing myself full of mince pies over the Christmas break anyway let's have a chat about the mission we're doing today this is of course Pegasus 3 we launched a, a mission to Nemesis last episode we landed on the surface for the first time and we got a bunch of money a bunch of world first and it was awesome and now of course we need to return to nemesis to get some more science and a bit more money what we're trying to do on this mission is get enough money so that we can upgrade our r d center which will allow us to research some more advanced technology we're also taking yet another world-renowned scientist on this mission uh, because they pay so well, they pay upwards of 200 grand to be on these missions and we get a bunch of science and such uh, and just from going to a location we'd be going to anyway, we just have to land in a slightly more specific landing site uh, but it makes the missions a little bit more challenging I think. We did add some slightly larger solid rocket boosters onto our launch stage because of course last time we ran out of fuel so uh, this time we gave ourselves a little bit more fuel on takeoff, a bit more of a kick because of course the thrust to, thrust to weight ratio of our launch rocket isn't particularly high and that's actually more than enough we only just ran out of fuel on the last mission uh, so as long as we do things a little bit more efficiently this time um, and you know along with those more powerful solid rocket boosters we shouldn't have the same trouble this time so we're just getting into position for our inclination change we've done our trans nemesis injection burn and of course since our two moons are both in slightly inclined orbits we need to do a little bit of an inclination change just to get our periapsis low enough over the surface it's actually quite useful having the two moons in slightly inclined orbit. It means that pretty much every time we launch to them, we're going into a polar orbit, which makes choosing our landing site much, much easier. If you want to go to the moon in normal Kerbal Space Program, um, if you want to go into a polar orbit of the moon, it requires a bit more extra delta V, because you've got to do an inclination change to get yourself into that polar orbit. Uh, normally, you just go into an equatorial orbit, but here, we can just get ourselves into a nice polar orbit. And then what we do is we don't shrink our apoapsis down. We continue all the way up right to right on the edge of the sphere of influence of nemesis this is where we're traveling at a lower orbital velocity so it costs a lot less to make an inclination change this is so that we can land more accurately at our landing site remember last time uh, we did a very very expensive inclination change uh, to land at our landing site and that i think was uh, what sort of pushed us over our delta v budget which resulted in us having to push <laughs> get out and push literally get out and push the spacecraft back to solitude with an EVA pack but we don't have the same problem this time as there we go we do much more efficient maneuvers and we're heading down towards our landing zone it's uh, it's pretty dark once again we're sort of right on the terminator between daytime and nighttime so it's a bit difficult to see our landing zone I kind of screw up here I think that the uh, target marker is the same as uh, our landing site it's not I've actually got something else targeted I think I accidentally targeted one of the uh, one of the progress po pro 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 pobes po po Dameron. I just watched the Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Maybe maybe it's a Freudian slip. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I don't know about. It. I know it's, people are very mixed on it. There were a lot of things in that I didn't like, but on the whole, I really did enjoy it. Not as good as The Force Awakens. Um, not groundbreaking, but still, I think people need to remember they are they are just films. I still very much enjoyed it. But anyway, there's enough talking about Star Wars: The Last Jedi. I'm going to trigger flame wars in the comments. We finally make our landing and we get out and do some science. The fake nemesis falls over on solitude. Thankfully, you're on the real one in space. Grab ourselves a temperature scan. Temperature reads zero. An unsurprising and boring observation. What isn't boring is the view. 
In a trace of an atmosphere up here. Hey, that rhymes, Mr. Goo observation. Let's grab that. The goo seems to mimic Nemesis' surface. You worry the same fate will befall you. And last but not least, did I say Mr. Goo or materials? I don't know. Materials form themselves into a craggy round shape. Right, let's step ourselves outside. Katrina Kerman. Oh, hello. Doing a bit of a backflip. Uh, yeah, this pod seems to have a lot of rather explosive exits from it. But uh, unfortunately, we still can't quite do surface samples. But we'll be returning after we've upgraded our uh, R&D center. As you stand silently on Nemesis' surface, you question how it earned such a name. Ooh, truly pondering the questions of the universe. Right, let's get ourselves back inside, shall we? There we go. Oop, grab that. And board, we've got ourselves our... Uh, Report. Uh, we do, however, need to. Oh, hello. Yep, Ted Cop. Yep, he faced. <laughs> Experience is the same fate, right? Um, we'll get you up here. Oh, I forgot to plant a flag with Katrina. We want to do the flag planting with Katrina, not with Ted Cop, because Ted Cop's just a random scientist, whereas Katrina actually gets experience for uh, planting flags, so it's much better for her to be doing it. I'm not sure why she gets more uh, experience from planting flags than she does actually flying missions, but hey, you know. Who am I to question the logic of Kerbal Space Program? Right, we'll move ourselves just around. There we go, edge ourselves ever so carefully around. And we'll take the data from the other experiments. And there we have it. Hopefully we'll actually get our hands on some new experiments uh, relatively soon. And there we have it. Right, we'll get Katrina back out. She's probably going to do another back bit. Yep. <laughs> Characteristic fashion. Maybe it's maybe it's like a competition, a bit of one-upmanship between her and Tedcott. Who can do the fanciest exit from the uh, from the spacecraft? Right. Let's plant ourselves a flag, shall we? Let's get this. Let's get this done. Let's get ourselves home, back to the safe environment of solitude. Well, safe for now, anyway. Right. Pegasus three. This is the Lower Midlands. Uh, Katrina. Well, forevermore be the victor of the exit capsule in the most stylish fashion. Competition! There we go! Wonderful! Truly a plaque to inspire the ages. Right, let's get ourselves back aboard Pegasus 3. There's, again, no real reason for us to hang about. This time we changed our launch stage a bit. So we only had a tiny bit of extra Delta V. Uh, we didn't make any huge modifications to the rocket. I mean, it's a proved, you know, tried and tested system. We didn't want to mess with it too much. So we just added some larger solid rocket boosters. So we shouldn't have any trouble getting off the surface and getting home. Hopefully we don't have to do any, uh, any pushing this time with our EVA packs. But thankfully our more efficient manoeuvring and our... Uh, little bit extra Delta V made all the difference and we're not going to have to do any such thing this time. We get some rather beautiful shots of leaving the surface of Nemesis, undoubtedly blinding Katrina and Ted got her tag along scientist. As we don't head into orbit, we just head straight back to solitude because we were burning the correct direction. I thought, ah, why hang around in a parking orbit when you can just head straight home, undoubtedly. We're rushing to get back for the uh, festivities around Christmas time. And here we are, heading straight back towards Solitude, a textbook mission. There I dare say so myself. There we go, decouple the science module and decouple the service module. I think the missions to Guardian are going to be far more sophisticated. These missions to Nemesis are sort of paving the way for them. It's very interesting having two moons. It means that our missions to Nemesis can develop the technology needed to essentially do the missions to Guardian properly. I think what we're going to do is make them three-man missions. These are all two-man, these Pegasus missions. But we'll make them three-man missions and possibly take a rover, uh, which will allow us to explore the biomes of Guardian in fewer missions. Because, of course, there are double the amount of biomes on Guardian. Uh, and as such, we probably want to get through them. Uh, with less missions than it's taken to get through all of them on Nemesis. But we finally have enough money to upgrade our R&D center and enough science to grab the final tech in the node. So now we are launching Pegasus 4, the final mission to Nemesis, at least for now. Instead of Katrina and a scientist, this time we're taking Ted and Peter because they haven't been to a moon yet and we might as well train them up. Ted 
unlike Katrina, Ted's not a maverick. He's not going into places where no Kerbal has been before. Okay, He's just sort of our safe pair of hands. Once we've got uh, a mission profile and a flight plan and everything all figured out and there's pretty much no chance of failure, we give it to Ted. He's our safe pair of hands and we know that he isn't going to screw up. Okay, But when we need you know, someone with a little bit more bravery, someone with a little inkling of madness, that's when we send Katrina. I don't know why I'm giving my Kerbal's personalities a it's probably not normal. Uh, yeah, we just get most of the launch because it's another textbook launch. I mean, Ted's flying. Of course, it's a textbook launch. Uh, so nothing particularly exciting happens. And, well, you've already seen one mission to Nemesis today. So we just skipped through our trans-Nemesis injection. And here we are getting ourselves into another polar orbit. Although we're not taking a scientist. Well, we are taking a scientist, Peter Kermit. But not a world-renowned scientist demanding to go to a specific point on Nemesis. Uh, we are actually visiting Progress 4. So that's one of the probes that we landed on Nemesis uh, a little while ago go now and we need to get some temperature scans from around it the cool thing about progress 4 though is it's landed right on the boundaries between the steep slopes biome and the highlands biome it's landed on a massive mountain that juts out like 10 kilometers out of the surface which is why we have to have unusually high orbits of around 30 kilometers around nemesis the mountains are just so goddamn high but essentially what we're doing is we're going to go visit that probe not just to get the contract for the temperature readings, but also because it's, it's kind of cool to visit probes. Uh, it's much like what the mission Apollo 12 did, uh, visiting Surveyor 3 on the surface. You probably noticed there I right, upped the ambient light because our ambient light was just just stupidly low. You couldn't see anything. So I upped it by 10%, uh, so now we can actually see what we're doing on the dark side. I mean, you do you want to be able to tell that it's dark, but I literally couldn't see a thing. I think this makes much more sense and makes it much more cinematic. But without any problems, we touch down relatively gently on the hillside and go visit Progress 4. Man, everyone's going to say that this landing was staged, aren't they? Well, hopefully not. Let's do a temperature scan as well. Nemesis' exterior is cold. Like its heart. Nemesis radiates hatred, scaring away any possible atmosphere. Mystery goo observation. Goob becomes really nervous and tries to escape from the container. Materials study. You accidentally break something. You hope the warranty is still valid. Right, then let's get out. And uh, ooh, who do we want to give the honor to? I'm getting out, taking the surface. You know, let's give it to Peter. Let's give it to Peter. Come, he's the scientist, so he can have the uh, the honor of planting the flag, cleaning the experiments. Doing all that good stuff. Oh, look how happy he is. Okay, try and... Yeah, there we go. Yep, there we go. That's, that's a soft landing in my books. Yeah, just ignore that scatter glitch over there. Um, <laughs> I tried time warping a bit, but we've only got limited life support, so we can't really time warp to the next day. So we're just going to not look at it and pretend it isn't there. All right? Uh, there we go. Face Peter that way. Okay, cool. Let's take a surface sample. All kinds of minerals mixed together. We'd give those scientists back there a bit of trouble. EVA report, as you stand silently on Nemesis' surface, you question how it earns such a name. There we go. Surface sample. Hell yeah. Is that 96 science? Oh, in the bag. Right. Let's get up and let's clear these containers. Then we'll plant a flag. We can probably plant, plant two flags, actually, because you get experience, astronaut experience for planting flags. Yep, just ignore the scatter glitch. <laughs> uh, perhaps it's an omen from some kind of alien race. I don't know. Who, who knows? But yeah, uh, we can plant a flag up here and then actually we'll go have a look at Progress 3. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but then we'll plant a flag down by where we're actually meant to plant the flag. And uh, yeah, then we can give experience to everybody. So you just want to get off for a second, Peter. There we are. Then, oh, very graceful. Very graceful. Yep. Wonderful. See, if we hadn't upped the ambient light, then we wouldn't be able to see anything right now. I mean, it was pretty crazy. I think this is a decent ambient light setting. You can still tell it's dark, but you can actually see what's going on. Right, there we are. Ah, wonderful. Pegasus, uh, oh, spell it right. Pegasus 4 Highlands. What can we possibly put on a plaque that will stand the test of time? Um, let's hope that the scatterer which isn't some kind of omen there we go okay i'm sure that will definitely confuse future generations who pilgrim to this actually no there won't be that many future generations that pilgrim to this this point because it's going to get incinerated by archangel isn't it so never mind it doesn't even matter what we put on the plaques we could put we could fill them with rude words and nobody 
would be any the wiser. Right, uh, now we've done that. Actually, yeah, let's get Ted out. Ted, there we go. And I want you to go have a look at Progress 3, just for just for giggles. Let's go have a look at it. See how it's getting on. Give it some company. Give it a kiss, you know. Give it a kiss and a hug. Can't possibly go wrong with doing that, huh? Now, I've, I've learned that the gravity on Nemesis and Guardian, it's 0.2 Gs, uh, which is stronger than the moon. The moon is 0.16 Gs. Uh, so we can float around with our EVA packs, but that's why it's a little bit more difficult to get back from Nemesis and Guardian than it uh, was on the moon, and especially on Minimus. Uh, they're both slightly more difficult moons, actually. Not just to land on the crazy terrain, but also to get off of. Because of the slight increase in gravity. Right. Oh, look at it. It's gorgeous. It's a relic of an earlier time. I mean, in Kerbal timescale, this was launched, like, a month ago. Uh, but still, it's pretty cool. It's like uh, Apollo 12, where they landed near one of the surveyor probes. And they found it covered in bacteria, and it terrified them. But actually, looking back, it was probably just contaminated. That's when, uh, that's before NASA, you know, started sanitizing their space probe. So there was a bit of bacteria which had survived on the spacecraft and it sort of scared them a lot. But uh, in reality, their instruments were probably just contaminated when they got back. It's highly unlikely there actually was any bacteria on the spacecraft. And look at that. We could disassemble it. I don't think that's, there's much point in doing that. Uh, we could collect data, but we've already got data now. So... Oh, it looks like we didn't actually transmit the um, material study. Oh, we never transmitted it. That's crazy. Say that the contents of the bay are destroyed would be a terrible understatement. Wow, look at that. We can't take it because we've already got data from uh, materials bay. We didn't... What? We didn't transmit the goo either? That's very strange. Very, very strange. We did transmit, yeah, we transmitted the pressure data. Oh, we could have got some more science out of that. It doesn't matter because we're about to recover all of it. But hey, you know, we discovered something. If not dormant bacteria. Right, uh, let's jump in the air. Try not to take out the antenna. In progress through it, let's try not to defile. Again, it's not really going to be a future historical peg sort of pilgrimage site, is it? Because this whole moon's going to get obliterated. But, you know, I, I want to be respectful to the space probe that pioneered our space program. Even though it's not one of the pioneer probes. Ah, I was traveling too fast. <laughs> I tried to slow down, but uh, nope. I just sort of smashed straight into Pegasus 4. Uh, yeah, full speed. Let's not do that again. Um, let's just try not to smash ourselves into the spacecraft. And right, let's head ourselves down to that little temperature scanny area. Get ourselves a bit more money and get research data from the final biome of Nemesis. So we fire up the engine and we do a little bit of a hop, skip and a jump just to get over this little crest of the mountain and then we can float gently on down towards that temperature scan area. Unfortunately, the scientists, the boffins back in the R&D lab, or whoever the hell's paying us to do this crazy contract, want to scan the temperature on a really, really steep part of the hillside. Uh, yeah, you couldn't have asked me to scan something Maybe a little bit closer to progress for... No, no, you want to do it on the sheer cliff? Uh, yeah, okay, sure. So we grab ourselves the scientific data from this final biome. And then we realize, ah, the hatch is kind of obscured. So we need to retract the landing leg, slide down a little bit, roll over, do a few acrobatics, and then we can finally get out. Peter Kerman, or is it Ted Kerman? No, it's Ted Kerman, and we can plant yet another flag. There we go. Steep slope. Watch your step. And there we are. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that that temperature scan thing, there are actually five different waypoints we have to reach, and we just don't have the fuel uh, to be making those jumps. It wouldn't ma really matter if the five different points we have to scan the temperature at were close together or even the same elevation, but these are big mountains. It costs a lot of fuel to get to the top of them and then jump back down them, and we don't have the fuel to do it. Uh, we, yeah, we've already made more money on the contract just by doing that one temperature scan than we will lose from cancelling it. Uh, so it's no biggie, really. And we are going to cancel it because we're not returning to Nemesis for a while. We can't justify the cost of a whole other mission just for completing really what wasn't a particularly well-paying contract anyway. I just wanted to visit those last two biomes and also pay progress for a little visit. So we're just going to head on home back to Solitude. A little annoying. We have to lose a bit of reputation for cancelling that contract, but you'd much rather do 
that and have yet another mission stranded and have to push them back using their EVA packs. Ted would certainly not be uh, not be an advocate of that plan. He's not that kind of person. But sure enough, we get ourselves on our return trajectory. Actually, a little bit too steep. We have to adjust it to make sure that we aren't going to head too far into the atmosphere. And then we sort out all our science from our science containers, grab all of the data, and then get back inside the spacecraft. Ted doesn't seem to have a problem getting back inside it. For some reason, Katrina had loads of problems getting in and out of this type of capsule. But I don't know. Maybe we've sort of honed it by now. I remember the first extravehicular activity, which is getting out of the spacecraft, performed by a Russian dude on uh, one of the Vostok missions, was it? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to recall things from memory, and now people are going to tell me all the answers in the comments. I'm going to get 50 comments telling me about it. But uh, essentially, his spacesuit, because of the pressure inside, inflated once he got outside. And because of that, he couldn't get back inside the airlock. He had to let oxygen out of his suit, depressurizing it to dangerously low levels before he could actually squeeze back in through the airlock. Uh, so he very, very nearly died. The first EVA around planet Earth very nearly ended in disaster. But thankfully, we can get our Kerbals in and out of the capsule just fine. Ted does a bit of a uh, bit of a crazy move there, jumping out of the capsule in order to grab some EVA reports, flying low over the lowlands. But he's just fine. And we get ourselves another wonderful bounty of science and even a little bit of money. So with our new bounty of science from the last two biomes of Nemesis, I think we're going to grab ourselves command modules, which is quite important for our three-man missions to Guardian, which are certainly up and coming. We're also certainly going to need advanced electrics if we want to be launching any kind of communications network in the near future. I believe we managed to get ourselves the telescope, didn't we? We got ourselves a telescope somewhere. Space Expo yeah, there it is. The TB75M telescope. And I think what we're going to do is launch ourselves a communications network. And then we're going to get that telescope up in the sky and start having a look at some of the more distant objects in the solar system. Past the moon so we can start planning some missions to them. Now we actually have advanced electrics. We can probably start thinking about launching probes of them while we're launching the missions to Guardian. Because we're going to have quite a few missions to launch. Uh, and we might as well be doing something else in the meantime. So, here it is, Atlas 1. Three communication satellites in one launch. Now, we're trying something new with this launch. We're going to try and reuse the first stage, as you can probably see from all of the parachutes. But we're not doing it in the same style to Tape Gaming. If you don't know, Tape does it the stock way. Essentially, he puts a probe on it, takes a steep, steep trajectory, gets himself into orbit, and then swaps back to it before the first stage re-enters the atmosphere and despawns. We're not doing that. I've picked up a wonderful little mod called the Flight Manager for Reusable Stages. And what that does is when the first stage burns out and we decouple it, it makes a little save. So we can continue on into orbit, then we can jump back to the stage at the moment of separation, and then we can land it safely and then continue with the mission. It's an awesome mod and it saves a whole bunch of time and I'm not entirely sure why Tate didn't use it. I guess maybe he liked the challenge more, wanted to be a bit more stock, but as you can see it's now made a little save. Now we've separated from the Atlas 1 probe and we're going to continue on into orbit. There we have it and now all we do is swap back to the booster and there goes our three satellites into orbit and we can turn the booster around and we can return it to the surface. Now I've never really done this before in Kerbal Space Program, ever, let alone this series. It's, reusability is just not something I've done. So whether or not it'll re-enter is something you'll have to see in the next episode. But thank you very much for watching, everyone. I do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.